Hello again, this is Shelley, and I had a, a really great response from people who wanted to see more uh, Copix tutorials. I have to say, I'm not certified. I am actually going to go get certification um, this month, but um, right now I'm just teaching you what I have picked up on my own, and uh, hopefully some of it will help you if you got Copic pens and you're afraid to use them. I suggest you get them out and give them a try. The last time I, I did my tutorial, I did skin tones, and today I thought that um, we would work on hair. To achieve the shaded, bright, to sh sh shaded colors, um, it's actually a quite simple technique, and I'm going to show it to you. Um, the colors that I'm going to use today are E29, E34, and E31. To start with, I like to start with the darker color and blend lighter, which is something you can actually do with these markers. And it isn't something that you can do with most any other marker or paint that I've ever worked with. In fact, Usually, you can't apply light to dark and get away with it, but with these you can because the really unique thing about Copic markers is that they don't they don't uh, bleed into each other. They do blend into each other, but they don't bleed. I'm going to put this dark color down, and when I put a light marker on top of it, it won't pick up the dark color. It won't stain the tip. It will be like separate thing. It's kind of like magic. Really, it is. So I'm going to apply the darkest color into these spots that I think would be shaded. Behind the neck and the face, around the ears, the hairline, the crown, and right here on the side above the shoulder. And I don't want to do straight choppy lines, I kind of want to have a kind of a feathered look because that will look more natural. I'm also going to just lightly add it on to the tips here. See this, this locks of hair kind of lay over the top of the others, so these are behind and these are our recessed colors because they're laying behind and they're darker. So you think the darker colors are recessed, the lighter colors are in the foreground, and that's kind of how you just have to keep thinking. And that's about all I'm going to do with the darker color for now. Next I'll use the E34, and just like I showed it the flesh colors, where you go right back over what we've already done to blend and bring it down even more. Like I said a few moments ago, I'm laying a lighter color on top of the darker, but it will not pick up any of that dark ink and stain my tip or make it ugly and muddy looking. I haven't I had one bad experience experimenting with these when I first got them was using the wrong kind of ink. You have to use really the only one that I found is the Memento Tuxedo Black, probably any of the Memento brand inks they won't smear with these markers. These are, markers are alcohol-based, and so you have to be careful with your markers because they, I mean, with your ink pads because they will um, smear, but the Memento inks don't. And this actually is not a stamped image. This is one that I drew myself last week, and I took it down to Kinko's and had some photocopies made of it. 
and that's what I've been working with. And this ink, I'm not really sure uh, what they use in their ink. In their printers, or coffee machines, if I could think of the word. But um, it doesn't smear, it works great. So I'm happy to have discovered that. Okay, so that's the, the medium tone. And now um, the light tone is E31. Usually, with any um, color that you're wanting to blend, three colors will suffice to get a good blend. You can use more if you want to, but three colors will work. And in future tutorials, I'll show you a little trick you can do if you don't have that medium tone, how you can create it using a dark and a light tone. But today we're just going to do this. And I think you can see that this is already starting to look shaded like it should and dimensional. The lighter colors on top, the medium tones blend into the dark. And I usually like to go right back over what I've already done just to kind of sharpen it up and brighten it up a little bit. Makes it a little bit more exciting. And if you use the you just keep blending it. It just it looks richer. And I won't say realistic but at least better animated. I hope that um, this gave you some tips on how you can create hair shading, shading hair. And, and uh, I hope that this helps you. And if you have any questions or if you have any tips that aren't clear, please feel free to email me or leave a comment, and I'll try to answer those the best that I can the next time I make a video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.